Hello, my name is Josh Knoll, and today I'll be presenting on superconducting magnets, the mechanisms that allow them to work, and potential applications they have in society. There are two physics concepts that contribute to making this technology work, the first being quantum levitation. <clears throat> quantum levitation takes advantage of the Miser effect, a phenomenon that states, when a material makes the transition from a normal state to a superconducting state, it actively excludes magnetic fields from its interior, meaning that superconductors repel magnetic fields. In a way, this helps amplify the repulsion of two magnets if one is a superconductor, allowing the superconductor to float above the track as you saw in the video. The second concept that enables this technology is quantum locking. Quantum locking occurs when a superconductor allows magnetic flux to enter in small packets surrounded by a superconducting vortex. This means that the superconductor allows the magnetic field to pass through it in small concentrated areas. These small packets of magnetic flux lock the superconductor above the magnet, enabling it to hover with much more sturdiness than a superconductor that is only taking advantage of quantum levitation. While quantum levitation is still a young piece of technology, the potential applications seem too good to be true. Imagine super high-speed rail with no factor of friction to limit the cars. This same idea also applies to wind turbines, which lose a small percent of power due to friction. Another possible use is for 3D cell cultures. Cells grown in petri dishes aren't the best models for 3D human cells, so levitating cell cultures would allow them to grow in three dimensions for better study. These magnets could also be useful for studying the effects of weightlessness. Many scientists believe that humans will eventually journey into space to find new resources once we use up those on Earth. Researching the effects of weightlessness could enable us to do so earlier. In this video, we can see a demonstration of the superconducting magnets and their ability to quantum lock and quantum levitate. And you can notice how the magnet doesn't lose speed unless it touches the other magnet and does not fly off the track. That is due to the quantum locking holding it above the magnets and as long as the magnets are continuous it will have somewhere to uh, be held in place. So, this is a really interesting piece of technology that hasn't really fully developed yet and uh, it has a lot of potential in uh, future tech that would really be interesting and almost out of a sci-fi movie. The possibilities of magnetic levitation seem endless, but there are a few obstacles in the way for the technology to achieve its full potential. The initial cost to install a large-scale magnetic levitation system would be enormous. If you were to buy the strongest magnets available to consumers right now, it would cost around $100,000 to make a 1-inch wide, 1-mile long track. With around 130,000 miles of track in the U.S., this would be a significant an unpayable cost. Currently, superconductivity requires temperatures around negative 190 degrees Celsius. This is a huge issue because once the superconductor warms up, it is no longer a superconductor and the system fails. In addition, keeping something 190 degrees below freezing at all times is incredibly expensive to maintain. Unfortunately, until a less expensive way to produce superconductors is found, it is unlikely that this tech will be brought into the spotlight. 